The state of California is long, uh, relatively narrow, somewhere toward the uh, northern part of the middle of the state is the town of Sacramento, our state capital. To the west is San Francisco. In between, roughly, is something called the Sacramento-San Joaquin Delta, an inland estuary that does not flow directly to the ocean, but flows to the San Francisco Bay, and from there into the ocean. It is the center of a complex mix of management questions, scientific questions, political hopes and desires, and is currently much of the focus of attention uh, during now this, the fourth year of a serious drought in California. Here's what you need to know about the Bay Delta and California in general. We get 97% of all the, the rain and snow that comes into California uh, just naturally. 3% of our water supply on average comes from other states or desal or other alternatives. So we're heavily dependent on precipitation. A good slug of that, not the largest part, but a good slug of that historically flowed into the Sacramento San Joaquin Delta to the San Francisco Bay and out to the ocean. 150 years of human development has seen the conversion of half a million acres of land in, in the historic delta from periodically flooded wetlands to cities to towns and mostly to farms, protected by aging levees that were not well constructed uh, now, and farmed extensively uh, with a resulting drop in the land elevation that creates the risk of flooding uh, and increases it. In the 1950s and 1960s, the federal government, the state government, uh, with approval narrowly of the voters of California, constructed a series of dams and conveyance facilities that have come to be called the California Water Project and the, the Federal Central Valley Project. Water that historically went through the delta to the ocean is being diverted uh, largely to agriculture in the Central Valley, but also to urban areas in Southern California and along the California coast, and some in Northern California. Uh, no surprise that the demand for water, generally speaking, seems unrelated to the supply that nat comes from nature, and in the fourth year of a drought, everyone's complaining because government is not delivering to them all the water they want every time they want it. The problem is, of course, there is no single, there are no two systems of water in California. There are uh, over a thousand water and, and similar related local government agencies. And just taking a look at the, the Bay Delta for an example, there are a minimum of 200 federal, state, and local agencies that have some kind of legal authority in and around the delta and thus affecting the use of water and the environment that has largely been destroyed by human development and water development too. The, uh, uh, the history of dealing with water in California is largely driven by periodic legislation but mostly litigation between water using parties seeking to protect their own interest. So what's, what's going on now is a painfully difficult process to try to figure out whether the involvement of science meaningfully can make a difference. The focal point in the Delta has been a plan to dramatically expand the existing water conveyance systems. Current idea is uh, uh, two, two big tunnels would be built that go underneath the Delta that's protecting water quality and guaranteeing other things, uh, go down to the existing conveyance system uh, in the southern part of the delta and head off to people in the farms of the Central Valley and uh, throughout California who use it. Scientists, however, have been uh, uh, pretty much of the mind that simply solving a water conveyance problem may not solve environmental problems and were thus caught on the horns of a dilemma. What you'll often hear outside the state is that people will say, well, California water's not complicated. You're just moving water from one end of the state to the other. 
and it's contentious because the stakes are so enormous. What I'd like to do in the next couple of minutes is just to point out why this is such an enormously complicated system to manage. And also, as part of the background here, as Mr. Eisenberg also pointed out, until recently, most of these decisions were made in the courtroom. They were not made in appropriate scientific forum. So that's one of the things which is going on here in California to try and change that. And secondly, it's also very important to point out that science can inform policy, but scientists cannot make these very difficult decisions. And the reason for that is that between analyses of different futures that might exist out here in the San Francisco Bay Delta, the actual decision that's made is there's a layer there that's related to value judgment. And you cannot draw the science community into that kind of debate. Our job is just to clearly articulate what those futures are to the best of our ability. So what are some of the challenges? First of all, just scaling the science to the scale of the problem. Uh, about two-thirds of California residents rely on Delta water. That's about 26 million people. Um, in addition to that, on the other side of the issue, on the environment, there are more than 700 species reliant on the Delta. And more than 50 of those are either threatened or endangered. So this is a global hotspot for biodiversity. It's also a global hotspot for the loss of biodiversity. We spoke earlier about the variability in the flows and the importance of the precipitation. Recent work by Dr. Dettinger has shown that this variability is created by the major floods that come through. The low normal flows that are there each year, they come and go, and that determines whether you're in a drought or in a very wet period. It's these very major flood events that make the difference. And Mike Dettinger, the reason I mention that is he is not only a world-recognized scientist, but he's also a master at science communication. And he coined the term atmospheric river that you can see in the presentation. What happens when an atmospheric river approaches California is it sets up and drops very intense rainfall. Some of the inten most intense rainfall encountered in the US is right here in the central part of California. But this is just the start of the complexity. The spatial area of the delta is enormous. It's areas which have been diked to create islands. Over time, these islands have subsided due to groundwater pumping, due to oxidation of the soils, due to heavy equipment running over the same fields year in, year out. So much of the delta is up to 25 feet below sea level. And there's a figure here that shows the comparison with the Netherlands. If you were to drive from uh, Amsterdam to Rotterdam in the Netherlands, you would have traveled about two-thirds of the distance from Stockton to Sacramento. So the scale is just en enormous. So why should we care that these islands are subsided? Essentially this creates a massive hole in the landscape. And these levees were not heavily engineered. They started out as small levees that have been built up over time. The challenge is that we are in a very high seismic region. And projections for 6.5 earthquake in this region are actually overdue. The possible consequences to these levee system uh, is potentially catastrophic, as you can see in these few simulations. Uh, it's estimated by some researchers that a 6.5 magnitude earthquake could result in 20 islands failing. Where does that water come from to fill the gap in the hole in the landscape? The only place it can come from is the bay, and that water is saline. So we run the risk here of turning the very intakes for the water that supplies irrigation water to the Central Valley of California and to the major metropolitan areas of Los Angeles and San Diego. That, air, that water supply could turn saline within a few days, and there's no quick fix. So this is part of the massive um, risk that faces the Delta today. But that's one side of the equation, uh, what it was referred to in the Delta Reform Act, the co-equal goals. The other side is we are dealing with an ecosystem that's on the point of collapse. The Delta smelt is perhaps just one of the species that has become symbolic of the challenge that's being faced. And in this drought this year, it's very questionable. Many biologists are saying this could be the period where we actually lose the delta smelt, one of our endangered species. 
So the question is, how do you actually structure science in this very contentious environment to build a common body of knowledge? For those of you who are interested, go to the Delta Stewardship Council webpage, and you will see there the Delta Science Plan, which is uh, a subset of the Delta Plan, which deals with these very complex management issues.